you want to know the three classic mistakes that clinic owners make that just kills their profit? That's what we're talking about today. Hi, my name is Mark Bentz and I'm the owner of one of the largest multidisciplinary clinics in Canada. I started the virtual CEO because I wanted to take clinic owners from overworked, underpaid, to living life on your terms and a clinic that is extremely profitable. First mistake, and it's a big mistake, and people get so carried away in this area, and it's the word culture. Like it's unbelievable. Culture is suddenly this incredible thing that everybody has to have. And yes, it's important. People need to know when they come to work that they're valued. People need to know that the team is strong. Yes, it's cohesive. Yeah, it's a professionally run business. Absolutely, that's important. What's not important is how many jelly beans you have in the jar, or if your nap room is open, 12 hours a day or two hours a day. Now, one of my great mentors, Keith Cunningham, he has that line. And I just, I tell you, every time I hear it, it makes me laugh. Because culture isn't that. Culture isn't dinners out. Culture isn't an endless uh, continuing education allowance that you give out. It's not. Culture is really, people want to know you have their backs, you'll support them, the therapist, like I said before, can come to work and their practice and the clinic that represents them is professionally managed and that you're willing to make the tough decisions, not the easy ones. We're not all friends here. And that's a huge mistake people make with culture. Oh, we all got to be friends. If we're all friends, I can guarantee you, you ain't making tough decisions. You're just not. So don't get carried away with the jelly beans, the nap rooms, the dog go walking, whatever it is. Make sure that your culture fits for what the therapist really wants. Because at the end of the day, sure, people will go for dinner with you. Sure, people will take up a CEC course. People love all these different things. But when the shit hits, they want to know you've got their back. And they ultimately want to know that you can actually keep the business afloat. So that's culture. That's a huge mistake clinic owners make. And what that does is they spend money and a lot of money in this area. And that kills their profit margin. Number two. And this is one you probably don't realize, but I've talked about it before. Part-time therapists. Now let me give you an example. So part-time therapists have problems on many fronts. My nose, my nose, my nose. Oh, God. The first front that's a huge problem is the fact that if they, let's say part-time's two days a week, okay? This therapist is in two days a week and they work at other clinics. And here's the issue. An initial comes in and they want to see that person. They just had an initial with them. And the therapist or the front desk staff goes, oh, they're only in here two days a week. And it doesn't match up with that initial patient schedule. You've now pissed off your initial patient because they can't get in for the full set of therapeutic care that they need. It's so obvious when you think about it. Now, picture that full-time therapist. Initial comes in, therapist is at your clinic four or five days a week. Lots of opportunity for that patient to get their, their therapeutic care. Now picture if it's really intense. Imagine the person is sciatic and they're running for a marathon. It's their first marathon. It's like a, a bucket list. They're 50 years old and they've always wanted to run a marathon at 50. You can see how pissed off someone's going to be when they go, sorry, John can't see you. He's only here two days a week. Part-time therapists are a real problem. Now you might say, oh, sometimes you have to have part-time. Yeah, you do. There'll be opportunities where part-time um, will make sense. Like it could be a new mom coming back. We've had lots of new moms come back. They come back part-time. Yeah, I get it, that works. But it's in a select, a very few select 
uh, situations that it works. It's not that, oh, you bring on a therapist and I want to work at two different places because I want to learn about different aspects of clinic growth. And if I can learn from your clinic and the other clinic, wow, I'm just that better off. When people say that to me, and I just had that said to me yesterday, I said, what's best for you is that you go try that other clinic. Go try it. Invest your time in there because unless you invest your time and figure it out, don't dabble back and forth. It's of benefit to nobody. So go try it at the other clinic. If it doesn't work out, come back and see us. But commit. If it works at the other clinic, fantastic. It's worked for you. You've got an amazing practice. But when you present that to that therapist, they start to look at it and say, oh, oh yeah, I can see how this could be. And I give a classic example. Imagine your partner, you and your partner, you've been dating four months. Things are just going amazingly well. Your partner comes home and goes, you know what, Mark? I got to tell you, I just love our relationship. And I love our relationship so much, I've been presenting another partner for our relationship. Now we've got three people in our relationship. Not so good, probably, right? You might think, no, no, that's not what a committed partnership's about. And you might go, oh, well, that could be fun for a little bit. Yeah, sure, it could be. But I assure you, it's going to create problems. So think about in that personal context. Because sometimes therapists, when you talk to them, can get a little carried away and they just don't even understand it. But when I gave that example to that therapist yesterday, whoa, man, she just lit up and went, oh my God, I get it. There's so many things wrong with a part-time therapist. Don't let it kill your profit margin, man. It just, it annihilates it. It's so simple. So number two, man, part-time, don't do it. Only when necessary, like only when necessary. Number three, team mix. Now you could say the part-time therapist is part of your team mix. Yeah, maybe you've got one part-time therapist and you've got 15 full-time therapists. That's a healthy mix. Now let's look at another part of your team mix. New grads, mid-career senior therapists. I just read uh, a post on one of my groups that I'm a part of and there's a uh, clinic owner reaching out going, oh my God, I don't know what's going wrong. This new grad, he wants everything. He wants dinners, jelly beans, dogs sitting in the nap room. He wants the whole kit and caboodle. And then what he wants is he wants a better rent. Now remember, let's go back to step one there. Number one, you can't invest all this money in all these sort of, I don't know, outside the real focus of your clinic culture events. Like you can't, you, you, you got to look at that business model. What is it really about? You got to focus your money in the places that make the most sense. So here's an example with that new grad that that lady is screaming about. What I would do instead of giving him dinners out or a CEC um, allowance, I would match him with a senior therapist. Because at the end of the day, I bet you that new therapist would really appreciate the senior therapist and the mentorship. Why don't you invest some money and pay that senior therapist to spend some time with that new therapist? I, I assure you, that that's going to be a lot better than filling up the jelly bean bowl again. And that's the team mix. And then you can say, hey, senior therapist, and I always say this, the best therapists get the best rent. In my mind, certainly one of the best things uh, or the best part of the best therapist is that they actually have personal referrals and a lot of them coming towards them. And a really amazing therapist with respect to personal referrals is taking no more new patients. We've got many of those people in our practice. They get the best rent. Now let's look at a new grad. How many new referrals are they getting personally? Not many. You, My last video, I just talked about it. Have a look at my example where I talk about initials, the therapeutic relationship, and how costly it is if the treatment plan isn't followed. Boy, is that ever costly. So you can imagine a new grad, it, there's no chance they should get the best rent. And if they want the best rent, the best rent is over there. It ain't at your clinic. You can't compromise 
a therapist that goes, oh, I need the best rent because my friend is getting it down the street. I say to them, go with your new friend. That's where you're best suited. Maybe a better rent structure in your team goes to the mid-career person. The person that's worked hard for several years at your clinic, built a practice. Again, maybe they're not a senior therapist, but they've built it up. So you can see when I talk about the team mix, I'm talking about new, mid, senior. That's the mix and it's a healthy mix to have in a practice, which then is a healthy thing to do for your profit margins. Because senior therapists, they will slow down. Senior therapists will retire. New therapists, get the right therapist, will work harder, will work more, will work weekends. Mid-career therapists, they're stable. So you can see again how the team mix is so good for your profit margins. But get too many new grads? Watch out, man. Watch out. You are going to have real problems. Because if you don't have enough senior and mid-career people to support them, you'll get a lot of in and outs. They'll join you for a year, they'll join you for six months, whatever, and they'll leave. And here's the problem with a new grad, quite simply. They don't know what they don't know. So it's not that they're like, oh, you're a bad person. No, you just don't know what you don't know. So you can't get too many of those people in the mix. Because just by their nature, they're going to leave to experience greener pastures. So there it is. Team mix. Very important when you look at your profit margins. If this business, if your clinic isn't making solid profit margins, you're not running a business. You're just running a stressful job. And if you're practicing on top of it in the clinic, I'm telling you, man, that's no future. Absolutely. Well, no, it may be a future. What am I saying? Who, who am I to tell you what your future is? If you want a stressful job, here it is. The equation is low profit margins, <laughs> work a lot yourself, bring in a lot of new grads, you're going to have an amazingly stressful job. So that could be what you're going after. I don't know. But I hope after seeing a bunch of my videos, you want to own your clinic. You want to have people working and they feel supported and there's a structure in place where you don't have to be the go-to person all the time. Where therapists will come in and they feel absolutely taken care of. Patients feel absolutely taken care of. And men staff love to be with you. That's what, I'm, that's what these, these videos, that's what it's about. So if you're finding those profit margins are way too low, please, Take a look at those three points because, boy, they'll erode your profit margins ugh, to an awful, awful level. Thanks, guys. Get out there. Take action. We'll talk to you in the next video.